Are you looking for a mini arcade cabinet with decent stick, buttons, fully portable with inbuilt battery, bezels, and customizable with RetroArch? Well, look no further! Today's package came from AliExpress. There are two versions, the 32GB and the 64 gigs. This one's a 64. There are six sides to the box, and all of them have this picture of Dragon Ball Kids playing Famicom. There's a nice carry handle to the box, and when we open the flaps, we see the instruction manual and this bag of goodies. Let's slide this out. Thank you for the invitation. I am sliding it out. I... So what we have here is the Power Kitty A12. Doesn't look too bad. Here's the instruction manual. A useless message. The charging slash power cable for USB-C. Sorry guys, I gotta touch my stick. Not bad at all. The buttons on the top are very clicky. And these are the standard cheap micro switch type. 24 millimeter in diameter and the stick is full size. We'll need a five volt, one amp source to power this beast. Around the back we have HDMI, two USB ports, audio out, micro SD, USB-C, and the power button. If we take a look at the micro SD card itself, it's 64 gigabytes unbranded. It takes this long to get to the games list. One little, two little, three little idiots, four little, five little, six little idiots. It's me, John Luke, welcome. We can move through the selection using the joystick, cycle through each game using up and down, left and right changes page. On the right of the screen, we have a game screenshot. Pushing the bottom left button, we'll start the game. The Neo Geo games are powered by the UniBIOS 2.3. With this, we can change the region, dip settings, things like that. Before you say something about the screen, much cleaner now, but the screen is stretched. For such a small system, the sound is incredible. It can get very loud with a lot of clean bass. If you push this button here, we can get to a slim version of RetroArch where we can save, load state, and change controls. Let's go find some more options. From the games list, hit button six a few times, and here we can change language to either Chinese or English. Display, we can have full screen or equal proportion. I'm gonna choose the bottom one. Then we got themes. We can change backlight level. Flesh light level. Timeout is like a screensaver. And that's about it. Back to the game, we have it running in the correct aspect ratio. I'm quite surprised at how well this is running with the stock firmware. Back to the games list, we can select some of our favorite games by using the select button. And you can see this list if you check out the save tab at the top. Moving over to the type tab, we can separate the list by system. The CPS and the FBA lists are a bit messy, but the others are correct. It shows what is supported at stock by this system. The FC choice is for Nintendo Entertainment System. We have the world famous Super Mario 14 in here. Here's the Mega Drive list, with the names being mostly incorrect. We have Metal Gear, which is named Alloy Warhead Super Tank. Then in the PlayStation list, Command & Conquer Red Ale. Trying to find Command & Conquer Red Ale? No. The search feature is pretty broken. There is a file manager here, where we could browse through the micro SD. We can see where all the ROM files are, as well as load MP3s. With this, we can load video files too. Unsure why they included this glass commercial. When using the HDMI out, we can plug it up to a TV, and then use this mini arcade as a music and video player. Unfortunately, games do not work using this method. Let's see how some games perform on this mini arcade cap. First up, two crude dudes. Macho Macho Man. I want to be a Macho Man. Ow. 
Outrun. Marvel Superheroes vs. Street Fighter. Toe Jam and Earl. Final Fantasy Adventure. A Power Rangers game. Super Mario RPG. A shooting game. Twisted Metal 3. Now this system can handle up to the PlayStation 1 alright, but we can see that all games have not been fully tested. Some will simply give us a not supported error. If you want to fix some of these issues, there are some guides online. I'll leave links down below. Shows you how to add your own games, changing the titles. But for us, we'd like to tinker elsewhere. Let's open her up. There are seven screws around the edge. Two smaller screws on the back, one under the sticker. We can see that there's room to work with inside, and we could also change buttons and sticks. But if you want to add a Pi or more capable system, we need to get a display driver board. How about some customer firmware? This one's Ruka CFW, it's on the GitHub, and this piece of kit is going to give us a full RetroArch experience. Considering this can handle up to PlayStation 1, we should be in for a good ride. A good friend of ours, Russ from Video Game Corps, has made a video guide in installing this custom firmware. I've not checked it. Sorry, Russ. You'll need to install a driver to a Windows PC, then attach your A12 to the PC via USB cable. Push these buttons like a gorilla, and then turn it on. Boop. Once Windows sees the A12, you can update the firmware. Once this is done, you have RetroArch on your system. I then found an image of Melasu and I burnt it to a microSD. Let's check out the boot up time now. A little quicker. The first boot will be welcome to Portuguese. Go to the cog, press up two times. And the bottom selection here is for language. Once we've selected this, go to the Home, Configuration, and Save Current Configuration. Now we'll have a full version of RetroArch, access to all the options, we're able to install and remove cores, and it'll give us a very snappy games list with thumbnails. It will also give us bezels. And of course we can play up to PlayStation 1, but the strength of this unit will always be arcade games. Now let's have a look at changing the stick and the buttons. They're not bad at stock, but I'd like to change this into something special. Use a minus driver to take off the knob. Take off the what? Remove the six screws from the joystick mount. And here's our stick. It is a circle gate, and we're certain that this is not a Sanwa. This we got from AliExpress. Either Sanwa have factories in China, or this is an extremely good copy. If you want to find one, I've left the link down below. Straight away we can see that the mount is a different size. The switches are a bit different, but they feel quite similar. The main difference would be the gate here. With the cheapest fakes, the C-clip and the gate are impossible to remove. Whereas with the normal Sanwa, we can pop them off quite easily. 
Gonna trade this one for an Octagate. With these, it's easier to hit each corner and it's better for older arcade titles. So the next problem is the Sanwa mount does not fit in this unit. So we're gonna have to do the switcheroo. Unfortunately, Sanwa glue in their screws to the mounts. So if you can't unscrew these, you'll have to bring out the big guns. Once we've switched the mounts, we can put the real sandwich stick into our A12. Next up, the buttons. We've chosen the Seimitsu PS14D, which are closer to the buttons used back in the day. We'll just unplug these cables, pushing the tabs on the side and pop them out. This envelope here came from France, from Sakura Retro Modding. They make these sticker sheets for the A12 and the A13. We'll set you back 12 euro. It makes the rather plain A12 into a looker. We're now gonna just push in each button. We will follow the same color layout as the Arcade MVS. Then reattach the cables from the back. Now, if this was on the market for $200, it would sell like hotcakes. Here's Metal Slug 2 with a CPU at 200%. It runs great. We can even play this game that was not on the Taito Egret 2. Or how about some Rockman X3? The pixel size is not equal, so let's go to the RetroArch menu, go to Video, Scaling, Integer Scale. Now it looks perfect. There is a bit of stutter as it uses a demanding Super Nintendo enhancement chip. Or how about some 32X? This is Virtua Racer. As we can now add cores, we can add things like Scum VM, C64, or how about some Amiga? This runs at about the same speed as a Pi 3, so some games like Jim Power may slow down. To the pros and cons. For the price, the Power Kid A12 has a lot going for it. It's awesome sound, it's full size stick, and then the custom firmware, which even fixes the HDMI out. The stock firmware has its issues, and the hardware could do with a boost. The spec itself closely resembles the Pandora Box DX, with double the memory. Like the DX, it's a potato to start off with, but with a bit of fiddling, it can become something amazing. With all the mini arcades available, there is a lot of choice. Each have their own audience, and not one of them is perfect. Which would you choose? Would you wait for a future model or would you want to see how far you could upgrade the Powerkid A12? Just want to say a quick thank you to all the guys on our Patreon. Your support is greatly appreciated. The next few videos will be Pandora based, so keep your eyes peeled. Hey John, are you okay buddy? Yes, I am fine. You got a bit obsessed with your sticks there and I did not wish to disturb. I was also servicing myself somewhat. Don't tell anybody. Alrighty then. So if you enjoyed that video, please give us a thumbs up and subscribe. This has been Amy Chicken of Team Pandori, and I'll catch you in the next one. Ta-ra!